and you had issues with my driving, will you please slow down, Greenlee? I'm not gonna remind you again. Baby on board. I'd like to live long enough to enjoy the pain of childbirth. Okay, buckle up. I'm buckled. Please, Greenlee, quick, calm down. Okay, slow down. Let's turn around and go back to the pine cone and talk to Ryan. And like Jonathan. Plan. Don't forget Jonathan. What should I say to him? Okay, I get that he freaked you out. And you want me to go back? Join the happy Lavery family reunion and announce a bouncing new Lavery's on the way? You and Ryan can talk about this in private. Did Jonathan hug me? Okay, see, I knew it. I knew it. I, I told Ryan not to do it. Would you take my advice? No, of course not. You did what? What advice did you give Ryan? Not to tell you Jonathan was alive, so that you guys could make up. You knew Jonathan was alive? Ryan told you Jonathan was alive before he told me. Okay, relax. And you told him not to tell me? This is because I knew that you would freak out. What else out? did you lie to me about? I haven't lied to you did about Did you know anything. that Ryan was alive? Did you know that he faked his own death? Greenlee! Did you report to Ryan so he could keep tabs on my grief? Shut up! Greenlee, shut up! When I found out that Ryan died, my heart broke right there with yours. How many nights did I spend with you crying our eyes out, sad that we lost Ryan? For God's sake, I'm carrying your child. Do you honestly think that I would go to such an extreme if I really thought that Ryan were still alive? Maybe not. But you still kept the Jonathan secret from me. How could you tell Ryan to lie to me? Because you're so stubborn. I know that you were hurt about his lie, and I thought that maybe if you had time to calm down and remember how much you love Ryan, then it would prepare you to find the news that Jonathan was alive. That read a million years. And that's how long before I trust you or Ryan again. Are you paying attention here? Ryan didn't take my advice. No secrets. That's what he said. He would never, ever lie to you ever again, even if it were to help his own cause. And I was completely right. I mean, if Jonathan were still tucked away, you and Ryan would be back together as we speak. But instead, we're back to zero. Jonathan tried to kill me. More than once. Tell me, what's the proper way of welcoming home my murdering brother-in-law? Give him a big kiss and invite him over for a fun family lunch? Throw it out the window. It's Ryan. Seventh time he's called. No, I don't want to talk to him. Okay, until the tenth time it rings, or from now until the end of time? Why? So he can tell me more lies? Ryan made an effort, Greenlee. He, he was going to tell you about Jonathan. Only because Jonathan called me. He had no choice. He was planning on telling you about Jonathan anyway. You were so close to giving him another chance. To stab me in the heart again. No. Ryan still loves you. He asked me not to tell my father that Jonathan was alive. I didn't. Still pathetically loyal to a husband who's done nothing but jerk me around since he took a header in the water. What kind of sucker am I? You're the kind of sucker who still in love with your husband and too stubborn to admit it. I'm tired of being played for a fool. But you just had a setback. A setback? Still shaking. Maybe... Maybe we should give Jonathan a chance but to... don't even. When I saw Jonathan and Ryan in that room with their little sister, it made me want to vomit. All Ryan's talk about changing, nothing's changed. It's still all about his brother. How many times did Ryan tell me that Jonathan was different? He was under control. Well, we all know how that ended. How is this any different? Ryan is different. I mean, he's completely at peace with himself now. He lost that. That look in his eyes, it's gone. Until I tell him that you're pregnant with our baby, I won't take that chance. Ryan's at peace? Let's leave it that way. Greenlee, Ryan's completely changed. He wants a family now. You know how close you are to getting exactly what you want? Those were hypotheticals. I tell him there's a real, live baby on the way, you better rev up his bike. Ryan told me it's all about me and the choices that I want. Well, I choose not to tell him. Okay, well, he took away your choices, and now you're taking away his. I'm protecting my child from a family of lunatics. By what? By punishing Ryan? Whose side are you on? I'm on the baby's side. You love Ryan. He loves you. The two of you will love this kid. When did you become such an expert on Ryan and me? Since I'm carrying your child. We're in direct contact. And he has a message for Mommy. Give Kendall the keys and let her drive you somewhere to chill. Either it's closed or it's condemned. Well, the lights are on, the door was open. Might look better in the dark. No, this is, this is good. 
No loud, annoying music, no grungy guys to hit on us. You can detox from what happened with Ryan. And Jonathan. And Aaron. The only thing missing was Cousin It. Okay, you know what? You're wound up too tight. We need to hunker down. Hunker down? You should get out of here before you punch up something country-western on the jukebox. I know what you need. Yes, I do. I know exactly what you need. I may be a teetotaler for the next eight months, but I can still make a mean Cosmo. That's right. Plus, you'll have a designated driver to take you home. Hmm. Turpentine. Battery acid. You know what? I think I might settle for a nice rot gut Cabernet. What's the house label? Sour grapes? Well, that does it. There are two things I can count on. The sun will always come up, and you will completely and utterly forever be a snob. <laughs> Gee, thank you. You're welcome. Well, then, okay. give me this okay, snobby snob. Uh, is this good enough for you? Oh. I think I'm going to get sick. <laughs> Don't get sick you? on me. Please. <laughs> Have I ever steered you wrong? You've locked me up, tried to drown me, but you've never steered me wrong. Wait, there was that one. Oh, time. drink it already. <sighs> Not bad. Hmm. I expect a tip. You're carrying my child, isn't that enough? From now on, I'm the official conveyor of instructions from little Ryan slash Greenlee. Don't ever refer to my baby as Ryan's. Well, half this baby's mindset comes from him. Is that why you brought me here? Get me drunk enough to break the news to him? How many Cosmos will it take? Ryan's got all the family he can handle. You're overreacting because of Jonathan. No! Not a word from you or my baby. I made my decision. Ryan will never know he's a father. Right? All right. Drink up. Don't mention it again. All right. Get in the case. What'd you put in there? Oh, is this good enough? Imagine your baby's face. Sure. I'll have my my eyes, my nose, my hair. And whether it's a boy or a girl, it'll still have my charm, my sense of style, my flair. Okay, under all those layers of bitter, and when no one's looking, don't you ever imagine Ryan's chin or his gorgeous eyes? I'd rather it have your chin and your eyes. Greenlee, this whole baby-making experiment was so that we could have a part of Ryan to love and to hold. Come on, it's just you and me here in this dive bar. Can't you just admit that one of the reasons why you love this child so much is because it's partly Ryan's? I love this baby because it's mine. You are so full of it. You are. You're full of it. I bet that you went to sleep last night and you had a little dream about a little girl with big blue eyes and a sparkle just like Ryan's. She can get anything she wanted just from a nice little smile, courtesy of Ryan. Or a little boy, tough and fierce, who can talk his way out of anything, but is as sweet as can be when you kiss him goodnight, just like his dad. Imagine that baby in Ryan's arms. Thank you for the Norman Rockwell version of my baby, but what happened today was a sign. One look at Jonathan and everything in me screamed to run as fast as I can and never look back. No, it was a shock, Greenlee, not a sign. Here's a picture. My baby's first Thanksgiving. Weird Uncle Jonathan and freaky Aunt Erin and everyone leaves their straight jackets at the door. Oh, and sharp objects? That's a no-no. I mean, who, who cares to carve a turkey? I mean, Uncle Jonathan will just blow it up. OK, you're being ridiculous. No, I'm keeping my child from coming into contact with anyone that could hurt him or her. 
And Jonathan tops that list. Ryan would never hurt this child. Greenlee, come on. You cannot undo this. You have got to tell Ryan. If you don't, you will regret this. Ryan and your child, they will never be able to get these days back. Not another word. I've made my decision. Well, no, it's wrong. I don't want to hear it anymore. Well, you don't have a choice. Leave me alone. Hey, if you, if you do not stop being a selfish brat and get down here, I will leave without you. Okay, hope it's nice and warm and comfy up there. Hope you have a nice little place to sleep and you're going to be all by yourself because I will leave you. I am not kidding. Okay, that's it. You know what? I'm going to get my keys out right now. You hear me? Getting my keys. Gonna leave any minute. I'm out the door. Oh my god. Oh my god. your help. I can take care of myself. Shut up and come with me. Green lady, please. Oh, no. People, okay? You ever hear of pregnant women who can lift cars? What? Shut up! Just shut up and let me and baby work. That's what you feel so gosh! Shut up! No! Not leaving you. She's small but fierce. I'll give her that. Uh, Simone, how long have I been down? She is. You yeah, have a chair or a brick? Look, my head's a little fuzzy here. You're not making this any better, so... Greenlee, I knew she was planning on telling you the news, and I knew that there'd be all sorts of ways that it could go all sorts of wrong, but you laid out on the floor with little stars going around your head. Okay, maybe if I stand up, it'll help me out a little bit, because it's not making any sense. You know, if Greenlee knocked you out, I don't think that she would want me to help you. Yeah. You must have been some type of massive jerk for her to slap you down. Yeah, I thought that when she told you, you know, that there'd be tears and hugs, kiss and make up, not so much, huh? Now, I was the one who got knocked out here, and how come you're the one not making any sense? What don't you get? The baby, Ryan. I'm talking about the baby. I've known about the baby for a while, Simone. You're kidding me. Who would be dumb enough to spill? Well, Greenlee told me herself. Oh, my God. What did you say? Well, what could I say? I said it was horrible. Who says that? Who are you? Stop, Simone, just... Oh, my look, God. I've I known about the baby. I know Greenlee lost the baby. I know she can't carry to term. It's horrible, and it kills me for her. So that means that you Look, just, don't... Have you seen Greenlee? Have, have you seen her? She was going to see you to tell you about the other... The other what? Shoe. About to drop. About how much she is at you. Which you know. I gotta go. Wait, Simone, you didn't answer me. Have you seen her? If I haven't seen her and you haven't seen her, who laid you out? <laughs> Go. Get out now! No, Greenlee, no, nothing. Watch you burn to a crisp. No, and who knows how long till this place goes up in flames? What firemen are for? Get some right now! No. The smoke is bad. I, I can't drag you out. I can get rid of the smoke. Greenlee, 30 calls. Just, just call me. Flat on his back on the floor. Greenlee didn't put him there. Ryan doesn't even know about the big stuff. Ryan can't even find Greenlee. Why is it that no one wants to give me any answers? He 
You know, when did I go back to being a bench warmer friend? Totally out of the loop. I'm just gonna keep calling until she picks up.
She's okay. Everybody's gonna be okay. when I heard the words at first. How about now? Help me understand. 
I lost you. No could have. He did. And then I thought I would die too. But I slept and I ate and I did all the things that people do because I had your child inside me. I had a reason to wake up every day. And then my reason was gone. Carry a child. She said she would. She must love me more than you ever did. Kendall does love you. I saw it in the fire, and I saw how much you love her, too. And this baby. I love this tiny little Avery. With your blood. In your genes. Kendall and I are going to bring this child into the world. And love him or her, and spoil him or her, and cherish him or her, no matter what you say or do. So this is it, right? Run. Run as faster or farther than you ever did. Because this baby's on the way. And I don't expect you to be here to say welcome home. Here's why are you still here? Because I'm still here. I can't pretend to get all of this. I mean, it's a lot to process. The fire, the smoke, and the baby. But I want to get it greenly. I want to understand. So that I can say welcome home, too. How's Kendall? Is the baby OK? To relax, we'll take care of you. I'll be able to relax when you tell me that the baby's okay. You know what this means. Greenlee and Ryan, they need this baby. We make it okay. This is what you do. You have a slight concussion. You took a lot of smoke. I'm not sure if it's affected the pregnancy. I'll do a complete physical and a sonogram. Okay, whatever it takes. See so if there are any complications. Yes. Just make their baby okay. Tell me when you know anything more. We will. Now we'll go to X-ray, check out your ribs. X-ray can get backed up, so wait here. I'll send someone to bandage that arm. Okay, I'll be right here when you get back, okay? I'll be right here. You'll be fine. And your mommy will be fine. And you'll be a family someday. Vane knows Jonathan is alive. I, I slowed him down, but we have got to find him now. Aaron, listen, there's, there's, there's been a fire. Everybody's okay. But I cannot leave the hospital right now. 